Are you ready to play America's hottest new game show? Name that condition. That's right, there is your chance to play along with our studio contestants and see how you do naming these seven refractive errors of the human eye. You'll have seven seconds for each one. Let's get going. Hello and welcome to the Laramie K. Optician Works Training Center, where today we are going to talk about seven of the eight refractive errors of the human eye. We will leave presbyopia for another day. Now, I can remember my first full semester in college for becoming an optician, and there's something that's always haunted me. We did optics, and we did math, and we did Snell's Law, and we did theory, and for an entire semester. We came back second semester and somebody finally put the refractive errors on the board. And it was like a light bulb went on for me, an epiphany moment. It was like, oh, there's a why to the how. And I, I just think it's so important. I don't know about you, but I think it's time that we put things right. There, that's better. We will begin with simple myopia. Remember, super important, we are studying the why here, not the how. The how is when we put a lens in front of this to correct the error that's back here. So today, although I put a prescription note up there, we are not going to talk about that. Simple myopia, and what's again nice is simple flat one-dimensional drawing, the eye stays the same, the incoming rays stay the same, the cornea stays the same, nothing changes. Simple myopia, the light enters the eye, they all, the rays coming into the eye converge on one single point, that's why it's called simple. However, that point is a place ahead of where we want it. We want it on the retina, the macula, the fovea, the place of perfect vision, around the optic nerve that lets our brain see what we need to see. Simple myopia, rays coming in, gather at a single point, Unfortunately, it's the wrong point. It's a little shy of where it needs to be. Why is it a little shy? A couple of possible scenarios. One is the eyeball itself is a little bit long in shape. Um, the rays want to be here, but the eye, the retina is back here. The cornea is a little steep. It does have a somewhat plus shape. Pluses converge. If it converges them a little bit too quickly, they fail to reach the back of the eye. Obviously, you could also have a combination of those two things doesn't change anything, you still have refractive error number one, simple myopia. Next would be simple hyperopia. Same eyeball, same cornea, same shape, same rays of light coming in, hitting the cornea, passing through the eye, and instead of falling short, they are falling on an imaginary place beyond where we want them. We want them here, they are trying to hit out here someplace, obviously putting them not where we want them, but to the side of where they actually need to be. Why does this occur? Kind of the opposite of the myopia situation. Our cornea might be a little shallow, so it's not bringing them in, converging them early enough so that they hit where they need to be. Our eyeball may be a little bit short. The retina of the fovea in relationship to where the light enters the eye is a little bit closer. Or of course, a combination of those two. There is simple hyperopia. Refractive error number three, simple myopic astigmatism. In this case, same eyeball, same situation, same rays of light, same cornea. Rays of light enter the eye. Some of the rays hit exactly where we need them to be. Perfect, spot on, perfect vision in that meridian. The other set of rays entering the eye, they fall short. They don't reach where they need to be. Why? The cornea is misshapen in that football shape. It has astigmatism. Some of the rays of light pour through. They do not require any correction at all, which is where our zero comes from. The other meridian, they need a little bit of help going from here to back there. Simple, myopic, astigmatism. 
Next up, number four, simple hyperopic astigmatism. Just the reverse of myopic, simple myopic astigmatism. Same eyeball, same cornea, same rays of light hitting. Enter the eyeball. Some of the rays end up exactly where they need to be. Another set falling on that imaginary point beyond the eye. These rays of light require no correction, hence the zero in the prescription. The other rays of light need a little bit of help being drawn from here back to that point on the fovea, the macula, the retina, to get that perfect vision. Why does this happen? Because the cornea is misshapen. It has two instead of one curve, hence bending the light in two different ways with two different focal points within it. Yes, this is far more complex. And if I had the perfect scenario, it would be a three-dimensional model. But, you know, we've been teaching this stuff this way for a couple hundred years now. It certainly works. Conceptually, it's actually a really good model. And I think the three-dimensional piece of how this works and how it gathers light in all the different ways in the circle around when going through a lens is, is actually better to conceptualize through the lens, which is what you're all about anyway, is designing that lens to correct this. So these drawings work pretty darn good. Number five in our list, compound myopic astigmatism. It's a variation of the simple, and in this case, we have our same eye, our same cornea, our same ray of light, rays of light coming in, strike, enter the eye, and none of them reach where they need to be. Some get closer than others. These rays are gonna need more power to go from here to here where we need them than this set of rays. That's why we have power in all meridians and why we have two different strengths in our lens order or our prescription values. So that is compound myopic astigmatism, and of course, caused by that misshapen cornea. Next up would be compound hyperopic astigmatism, and that looks like this. Same eyeball, same cornea, same rays of light hit, enter the eye, and they fall on an imaginary point past where they need to be. We want them here, and they're ending up out here somewhere. The actual rays are missing that central point. Some of the rays miss a little bit. Some of the rays miss by a whole lot. We need to bring that set of rays from here to here. So we're gonna use some power to do that. These rays need less power than these do in order to bring them to where we need them. Hence, the different power and the different values. Compound hyperopic astigmatism. Last but certainly not least is mixed astigmatism, which you might figure would look like this. Some of the rays are failing to meet the back of the eye. Some are falling behind. We've got our same eye, our same cornea, our same rays of light. We need to take these and bring them to here. We need to take these and bring them back to here. Our cornea is misshapen, it's misshapen in such a way that we have some rays that are beyond, some rays that are not close enough. So we are going to have a prescription, and we'll learn this in later lessons, that has both plus power and minus power within the same lens. Those are seven of the eight refractive errors of the human eye. We will get to presbyopia soon. As I say, it's not really an error. It is more of a condition. Are you ready to play America's hottest new game show? Name that condition. That's right, here is your chance to play along with our studio contestants and see how you do naming these seven refractive errors of the human eye. You'll have seven seconds for each one. Let's get going.
I do hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button. Please leave me a comment. I love getting them. I'm actually kind of sad I don't get home. I will see you again next week. <laughs>